guys, Alex here from Homeschool of Bel Air. On today's video, I'm gonna take you guys along with my planning process. If you guys are interested in finding out how I'm planning for pre-K, stay tuned. So before I show you guys uh, what I do as far as planning, I also want to show you guys the tray work and some of the activities that I have lined up for her as far as the first two weeks of school. Um, I do want to tell you guys that I, I'm, I might make it into like a planning series in the sense that I might show you guys, once we get into the actual letter of the week curriculum, I might give you guys some ideas on activities for certain letters, certain colors, certain shapes. Um, I don't know that I'll do it every week, but I might do it bi-weekly or so or um, every other week. I haven't decided yet. Um, but just be in the lookout because it might be something that I do every couple weeks. It just kind of take you in um, the planning process for um, the letters, for the numbers, for whatever it might be. So that was one of the first things I want to mention to you guys. Um, so before I go into um, the planner part of the planning, I do want to mention that this year, I don't, you guys have probably noticed, I haven't made a curriculum planner uh, video because it's not spectacular <laughs> this year. Um, what I ended up doing is I went with the Lakeshore Learning free planner that you get and Lakeshore Learning does this every year where they give you, if you make a purchase of $20 or more, you get a free plan book. That's what this is. This is the plan book. I just covered up the cover and uh, decorated it and um, this is what I came up with, but that is that book. Um, I got this book for free like two years ago and I never used it. And um, when I was looking for a planner for this school year, I pulled it out and um, it's pretty awesome. I mean, it's it has everything that I wanted in a planner. It has um, monthly pages and then it has actual, the um, actual planning pages are, let me show you guys a clear one. They're pretty basic but it's exactly what I like. Um, it has an area for the subject, time, which I'm not using, um, the day of the week, the week number, the number of days, the date, and then other uh, for other activities you might have going on. Um, so it's pretty basic, it's pretty awesome. The only thing is um, I didn't have enough planning space for Evelyn. So that's where, um, it kind of sucks because I do have to have, um, a whole separate planning system for Evelyn but then it's also okay because with her it's not really necessarily planning it's more just going by the lesson plans and uh, making sure that I'm doing some of those activities so I'll get into that in a so second. I just wanted to show you guys this because um, that kind of goes into Evelyn's stuff and why I'm doing um, her stuff the way I'm doing it this curriculum comes with a lesson plan that you can just print out so that's what I'm gonna show you guys now so I'm gonna go ahead and turn you guys around so you guys can see how I'm doing all the planning um, as far as Evelyn goes okay so um, this is what I have going on as far as Evelyn so this is a curriculum that we're using for um, Evelyn's pre-k school year and um, this is a planner that I had purchased which was a secondary planner just for her this is what I was going to use to plan out her activities, whatever it was that we had um, lined up. But then I realized that I also needed to print out the lesson plans for this curriculum. And then I thought, I'm going to have so many different things just to plan Evelyn's schoolwork out. And it's just kind of unnecessary. So what I ended up doing was I created this little book and a checklist. So this is what I have as far as Evelyn goes. Um, and let me explain to you guys why I have this little book here. Um, so Pamela for over at Giggles and Scribbles, she's the one that mailed me this preschool curriculum. She was done using it with her daughter and she mailed it out to me. She also mailed me out the lesson plans. So as far as the lesson plans go, this curriculum disc comes with two different curriculum um, versions. So you have curriculum A and then curriculum B. So the problem that I was having was that Pamela from Giggles and Scribbles, um, when she mailed me up the lesson plans, she used um, curriculum A with her daughter. I'm using curriculum B with Evelyn. So it's slightly different. Um, the activities themselves are different. The activity book is different um, that you print out. 
and um, the letter, the introduction of letter is different. Um, obviously, uh, curriculum A does it in alphabetical sequence, where curriculum B does it in more a Montessori approach. So we start with like letter C and so forth and so on. Um, so I wasn't going to print it out because it is 200 pages, but then I decided I'm going to have to because some of the activities are actually pretty great and they go with the, obviously with the curriculum. So what I ended up doing was I didn't want to waste paper because it is again, 200 pages. So I ended up using the curriculum that Pamela sent me and I printed my planner or my lesson plans on the back side of that. And I also printed it out two lesson plans or two pages per page. So then it ended up um, kind of small, but you can still read it and it gets to the point. It gives you the date, the week, the activities. Um, it breaks it up into different categories. So you have the let's move area, you have the fine motor um, in writing and reading, you have the math and science, creative art, sensory, dramatic play, snack, and the printables that you're gonna be using for whatever day. So again, I wasn't planning on printing this out, but then I said, you know what, I'm gonna need it. So um, I went ahead and printed it out. Um, so then what I'm doing because, um, so let me just show you guys real quick. So then what I did was I added my scope or my pre k glance sheets at the, uh, the back of the front cover. I went ahead and added those um, there. So it's two sheets. This one is week one through 18. This one is week 19 through 36, and that just kind of gives me an idea as to um, what letter I'm doing, what sight word, what number we're focusing on, shape, color, what I'm doing for science and um, social studies. So um, this is what I'm using. And then as far as let me before I get too much into this, um, let me show you guys real quick. So we start school August 1st, which falls on a Wednesday. Um, so our first week of school is going to be just three days long. Then our second week of school is going to be the week of August 6th. I'm kind of just combining these two weeks for her and all the activities that I have lined up for the first week of school are pretty much just going to lay over into the second week because this week is such a short week for us and it's really no big deal. Um, you guys are going to notice a bunch of scribbles and writing over the areas. That's because I wanted something that I can kind of just um, tweak and kind of just do it, um, do activities that I wanted to do. Um, and this makes it pretty easy, this curriculum, I would say. Um, so some of the, the, not only that, this curriculum, I will say, was also made for um, like a school setting. So a lot of the activities don't really apply because they're for like, you know, more than one kid. Um, so some of the things are being crossed out and then some of the things I'm just kind of adding my own, um, activities to them. Um, okay. So let me go back to the fir first page. So now the first page, if you guys see, um, the pre k at a glance weeks one through four, we're not doing the letter of the week curriculum, um, yet that we don't actually start our letter of the week curriculum until, um, the fifth week, which is, um, in September. So, when it comes to um, the first four weeks of school, what I decided to do, because we're just kind of focusing on all the alphabet, I decided to kind of do it uh, based on books. So for instance, the first two weeks, um, because again, I'm combining week one and week two, we're doing Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. Um, so week three, we're, do, we're focusing and doing activities based on Eating the Alphabet by Eric Carle. And then week number four, um, we're going to be doing um, activities based on... Um, um, what is it? The alphabet under construction or the letters? Uh, it's something like that. I'll show you guys the books later. Um, so that's kind of how I'm planning out the four, the first four weeks of school, just because I didn't want them to be boring and just, you know, focusing on the alphabet. So I decided to just incorporate books. Um, so that is how this is all planned out. Um, okay. So let me show you guys the checklist. So now this is a checklist that I decided to create for Evelyn. I'm going to try to get um, you guys a little bit closer. Okay, so as far as the checklist goes, it just kind of goes um, day by day or uh, Monday through Friday. I have an area for the week, the letter, or I'm sorry, week number, the letter, the number, the shape, the color, and the sight word. Um, I also laminated this so I could just easily erase it for every week. Um, and then we have your checklist. So first, obviously, we would have handwriting, our phonics workbook, alphabet workbook, interactive notebook, sight word workbook, her math, her color or shape um, workbook, whatever it is that we're doing. And then because I do tray work, 
Um, I just labeled them by red tray. We have the purple tray, the blue tray, the dark green, the light green. Um, and then we have the yellow sensory bin and then the yellow tray. And then any extra work or anything that I might have for her, I'll just write it down here. Which a lot of times would just be like a craft. Um, so for the most part, this is how we're going to be um, doing it for Evelyn. I just wanted something that I can check off. Because I hate writing stuff down. And whatever activity I have down in whatever tray... Um, if it's something somewhat spontaneous, like, hey, I just kind of saw this on Pinterest real quick. Let me let me set it up together. I don't want to have to write it down um, in here. I mean, I can, but um, I did the first for the first week of, we, of school. I kind of did add some of them. But as far as the checklist goes, I want to just be able to check it off. Like, okay, we did the green tray. We did the red tray. Um, and as far as the trays goes... I try to add, a, for every tray, I try to do a different activity as far as literacy, uh, math, uh, colors and shapes, a, the sensory bin would either be an alphabet, uh, literacy sensory bin or um, a color. I'll probably change that up um, every couple of days or so, just so she doesn't get bored with that. So um, again, I hope this isn't too confusing, but this is kind of what I'm using to plan Evelyn's uh, weeks out. So um, let me show you guys real quick. So again, the first two weeks of school, we're basing it on Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. And um, I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with this book. It's just a really cute storybook about the alphabet. And um, the reason I wanted this book to be the first one is because I do put up a little coconut tree. And um, as we go through the letter of the week curriculum, we add a letter sticker to the coconut tree so that Evelyn can keep track of all the letters that she's been learning. Um, so that is part of the reason why I wanted Chicka Chicka Boom Boom to be our first alphabet book that we kind of focus on. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead. Now, I wasn't able to uh, record last night when I was planning all the activities out, but I'll show you guys what I have going on as far as activities. And as far as alphabet books, I will say it's pretty easy to find activities. If you just go on Pinterest or just do Google searches on whatever book you're looking for and just look up activities for this book or whatever, you'll find different printables. So that's basically what I did last night. And again, I'm sorry I wasn't able to record that. Um, I'll try to do it in the future where I can record myself actually going through the um, actual looking process of looking for printables and things like that and how I set things up. So just note that I, most of the stuff I found on Pinterest or just on Google search. So now I'm going to go ahead and take you guys to Evelyn's little pre-K area. Okay, and real quick before I actually get into the actual tray work, I want to show you guys the three books that we're going to be using for the first month of school to focus on the alphabet. So the first two weeks of school are going to be Chicka Chicka Boom Boom, and this is by Bill Martin Jr. and John Arkambolt, and illustrated by Louis Louis. Lewis, <laughs> sorry, alert. Um, and then this, uh, the third week of school, we're going to be using eating the alphabet as our main focus for the alphabet. And earlier I said Eric Carl. I thought the animation looked very Eric Carl-ish, but apparently it's by the same animator as uh, Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. So it's um, Lewis alert. And then the third week, or the fourth week is going to be the alphabet under construction by Denise Fleming. Um, so these are the three books that we're going to be using for the alphabet. Um, so now let me go ahead and show you guys real quick the focus wall. So on the focus wall, we're not going to be doing a letter. We're not going to be doing a number or a sight word. So all I have is a shape, which is a circle, and the color, which is blue. Um, and then on this side is where I put up our little uh, shelf here. And that's new. I just did that this past week. And this is a book called Treasure Hunt uh, Counting Colors. And I love this book. I've been using this book for like a color focus area, mainly as like a poster um, since Adrian did pre-K with me. So that is what we kind of go through as far as color. We kind of go through um, finding the items that it tells us and we count them. I love this book. I seriously do. Um, so that is what I did there. I also put up her little numbers poster here. Okay, so now let me go ahead and go um, into the actual tray work itself. The first tray, because we tend to go down the line on the tray work, the first tray is always going to be our main focus tray. If we're doing like an actual letter of the week, this is always going to be our, um, like our phonic uh, tray. So it's going to have either objects that, like toys or different uh, things like that, that focus on the letter. 
for the first week it's going to be the book because this is what we're going to be focusing on so that um i like to leave it out because like that i can just read it out loud to her and we can kind of go through the whole entire book together um so that is going to be her first work tray so it's super simple the next tray is always going to be a name activity and that is this little one here um so for the name one i like to make it hands-on so what i have for her is a little uh, basket with uh, block letters that have the letters of her name and all she really has to do is match the block letters she's gonna look for the capital E and I love these blocks I got them at Goodwill I'm not sure where they're actually from but I love the fact that they have a lowercase on one side and an uppercase on the other side um, so like that you know that her name always begins with the capital E so that's where that one goes and then we just kind of go down the blocks and then she would have to just place them in the correct spot um, and I made her this on PowerPoint I sometimes make her name puzzles um, and I cut them up and I have her put the puzzle together depending on what I feel like doing but we just kind of use this for a lot of different things um, so in this case we're gonna be using blocks um, so that's her first activity and again it's gonna be a name activity the third tray is always going to be her craft or some kind of coloring page um, and I like to do it that way because that gives me time for her to work independently and I can work with the boys so that's kind of like my little break time so here I'm just giving her a little coloring um, coconut tree that she can color paint um, do whatever she can pick whatever she wants to use to decorate her um, her coconut tree the other thing I have and let me show you guys I'm gonna back away from her work area the little pre-k work box that I have here um, I did set aside this is what I use this for I kind of just set aside different things that we're gonna be doing for the week so she has obviously that is gonna change out because it's always gonna be some kind of a craft um, the rest of the crafts are in here or some of the um, other things that I'm gonna have her doing um, are gonna be just kind of set in here waiting um, to be changed out um, so in here I also have some letter stickers and I have different sizes I have this one and these are the foam ones um, and these so like that even if she wants to use some of these to decorate her coconut tree she can and I could always just put a few of these inside a little uh, basket or a little tray for her and she can use them um, so this is what I wanted to show you guys here because this is just where I keep any extra crafts that we're going to be doing for either this week or next week or the first week or the, the second week. Um, so again, this is that third tray. And then we have the fourth tray. The fourth tray is going to be more of a STEM hands on type of activity. So this one here, all she would really have to do, and this is one of those toilet paper rules, is a balancing um, activity. So she would just have to put as many popsicle sticks as she can balance up top. I actually told her that I would love it if she can put all the popsicle sticks on top of the little toilet paper roll. And um, all she would have to do is balance all these out. And as soon as she has all the uh, popsicle sticks up here, then she would have to start trying to balance the letters. And I told her that she can just kind of stack them up and figure out to see how many letters she can stack up. And just depending on the day of the week that she's doing this activity, I told her just, you know, pretty much if on Wednesday she could only stack three and they fall, that's fine. The next day I would like for her to try for more. Um, until obviously because we are going to have to be doing this for a whole entire week by Friday I would love for her to be able to stack all the letters obviously that might not happen I tried it a few times and I couldn't do it but you know it'll just kind of give her a little goal to try to um, do all the letters that are in here so I think this is fun she was already kind of messing with this a little bit um, but yeah but I think she'll have fun with that one the next tray here which is the um, the blue tray is just more of like a search and find letter activity so on this one here all she has is a dauber and because she is going to be redoing this activity a few times um, I did put this page in one of these protective pockets um, I also gave her a mat um, where if she wants to store the letters on the mat she can um, she knows she doesn't have to so all she would have to do with this activity is pull out a letter from her little uh, bin and um, find it in here as soon as she finds it then she can go ahead and take her dauber and go ahead and daub it um, and I've never had an issue with the dauber not working on the protective sheet it works just fine and it's super easy to wipe it off 
Um, and then if she wants to use them out to store the letters, she can. Um, that also helps her to um, remember the order of the alphabet. She kind of knows it. She still kind of struggles with it. Um, but yeah, so this is all it would be. And again, she would just have to pull out a letter and then find it in here and dob it. And that's pretty much it. And she can complete this activity. She doesn't, she knows she doesn't have to, but um, it's just something that she can work through. So let me show you guys the next one. For the next tree is the dark green tree. The dark green tree, I'm not gonna actually pull it out. That one is just an alphabet puzzle and all she would have to do is sit there and uh, put it together. This again um, would be something she can definitely work with independently. Um, and then we go into the light green. The light green is her shape um, tray. So this one's just gonna be focusing more on the shape that we're focusing on for the week. So all it is is gonna be a little circle um, card from the Target Dollar Spot. The little foamy um, uh, Play-Doh stuff that it comes with. Um, and just tools, tools she can use to create circles. So I gave her a little spatula so she can lift it. I gave her two little lids, blue lids. So this one, if you guys notice, I'm also focusing on the colors. So everything that I pulled out is blue. The Thankfully, this is somewhat blue. And it's hard to tell from the camera, but it's blue. Um, and then I found blue lids from old Play-Doh uh, containers. And I found a little blue spatula. And then I found a little blue um, foam um this is just like a little block um and what i like to for to have her do this or use this for is to um squish down the the uh the little play-doh stuff i don't even know what this is called the foam stuff so instead of her hand she can just kind of use the circle tool to press it down um and this here she actually likes to fill these lids up with this stuff so and she always does it on her own so i figured well but what better time to really just give her this as a little activity she loves doing this and she presses it down and fills up the little lid so that's just a little fun hands-on activity she already likes to do that so might as well just put it in a little work tray for her um so this will definitely keep her busy for a little while um in the spatula again she can just use it to lift this stuff um if she feels like she wants to do that um, and what I like about this stuff is that it doesn't dry. Um, it stays pretty soft, even if without a lid. Um, so that is her lime green activity um, tray. <laughs> and then her sensory bin. Her sensory bin is more of a color sorting activity. And um, this one, all I did was I got two dishes. She has a blue dish and a white dish. And um, she has a little pair of tongs. And then I just put the blue um, flash card on the blue plate. So she knows that all she has to do is go in here, find all the blue block letters, and put all the blue ones in here. And all the ones that are not blue go inside the white um, dish. Um, so this is an awesome little fine motor um, activity. She gets to color sort and dig around this stuff. I love to use this stuff for sensory bins. Um, one, because they're easy to clean. Um, and I've tried rice and I've tried water beads and that is just a mess for Evelyn. She just cannot handle that kind of stuff. And um, when I tried rice, I even dyed it and everything for her and that stuff was just everywhere. So this is so much easier to clean and I love it. And you can find it in all sorts of different colors. Um, okay, so this is again her color sorting activity and she usually has fun with these types of activities um, So that is her sensory bin and then And then her last and final tray is just a math the uh, math one So this one here would just be putting um, the number card in here and then she would just have to add that amount of coconuts to her little coconut tree so that is pretty much it as far as her um, tray work goes for the first weeks of school again some of the stuff I'll change out some of it I'll leave just depending on what I think um, she's enjoying and what she's not obviously this one is always going to change and again that is where um, all this kind of stuff that I have in here all this extra um, activities that I have in here um, so this one here is a painting that she's going to do with her hand she's going to make a palm tree with her hand on a piece of construction paper we're going to cut this out and um She's going to add the letter stickers of her name to the coconut tree. And then we're going to also, with this one, we're going to build a um, coconut tree on another day with these little things. And then she's going to get to decorate it with these letters. 
And then this one, she's gonna build a coconut tree with the little beads, um, little letter beads. And um, it's gonna be more of like a, a fine motor um, activity. And there's more of these beads in here. There's a bag. I just, some of those fell out. There they are. Oh, no, where are they at? They're in here. Oh, there they are. So it's these here. Um, so yeah, so all these little activities for the first two weeks are in here. Um, and I'm trying to think what else. Oh, her coconut tree. Okay, so then that coconut tree there is going to be the coconut tree that as we start the letter of the week curriculum and we complete a certain letter, um, that's where she's going to place the capital and the lowercase wherever she wants on that coconut tree. And I have her stickers in here that she gets to use for... Um, for that they're right here and these I forgot where I bought I think I got them at Walmart um, in the crafting area so these are the stickers we're gonna use um, for her coconut tree so again as we're completing each letter for her letter of the week she gets to add her sticker on the coconut until we complete everything um, I did this with Adrian and he loved it and we got to take a picture with him um, and Adrian's was over here and I would just stand him up on his table and he would take a picture next to his coconut tree Evelyn's is a little bit higher, but that's because I don't I didn't have all this for Adrian um, But I think it'll be exciting for her too to add her little um, letter to her coconut tree Until obviously we're done with the school year she, that little coconut tree will have the whole entire alphabet on it um, So yeah So as far as her activities that is all I have set out for her Besides obviously all her workbooks and stuff, but that's just gonna be you know, like one page a day of each workbook um, But yeah Okay, guys, so that pretty much um, is what I have going on as far as Evelyn goes for the first two weeks of school. Um, again, like I said, I'm going to try to make videos um, every two weeks or so, just kind of showing you guys either stills of her working on these things and then what I have planned out for the next week. Uh, I'm going to try to see how I can work that out. Um, if you guys have questions or comments or anything, please feel free and leave them down below. Um, again, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.